Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I have a few points here, but I'm going to, I suppose, pick out one or two. Thank you for all of it so far. Uh, and I'm going to come back to a few things that you said earlier. Yep. And I'm going to, yeah, okay, I'm going to choose two. So two things. Uh, number one, I want to come back to the point you made in the beginning about the morality of sainthood, martyrdom, that, let's say, the Christian Western world has embraced. And, you know, we also compared it already with the uh, Eastern, the East Asia, you know, they're not as much as, let's say, the Western Christian world, including the US, I suppose. Then, if this is so, so that's the, okay, you confirm, good. Then why is it that capitalism itself, a deeply individual system, thrived in such a moral system of sainthood, of martyrdom, of self-sacrifice that's the first thing can i can i take that one and then you can do the second one absolutely okay unless they're related okay no 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 no. it's okay so that's a great question um and it's interesting when it happens so when do we start changing in the west we start changing the west during the enlightenment that is the intellectual foundation of whatever freedom or whatever capitalism we have today and what is characteristic of the Enlightenment? It's a rediscovery of reason as man's basic means of knowledge through the scientific revolution. It's we rediscover and we elevate reason during the Enlightenment. And what do we do with religion? What do we do with that whole notion of sacrifice and everything like that? We, we don't trash it. We're not quite ready to do that. I wish, but we don't. We relegate it, though. Now it becomes something you do in your personal life. We say that it shouldn't impact the public square. It shouldn't impact politics. It should be something in your personal life. You do it over there. But in the, pers in the public square, we should only debate and we should only gu let reason guide us. I, I think I gave the quote from Thomas Jefferson. I mean, that was very much the spirit. No, maybe I didn't. I did it, didn't I? I bring before reason everything. In I'm paraphrasing. Including the existence of God. That's in an, on the Jefferson Monument in Washington, D.C. Okay. And that was the spirit of the Enlightenment. The spirit of the Enlightenment is reason is how we know things. Yes, there's a role for religion, but it's primarily in your personal life and at home, not in your public life. And that's a revolution. Because before that, there's no separation between state and religion. There's no separation between the public square and the personal square. Everything is about religion. So the Enlightenment is about the relegation of religion to a particular place in our lives and the elevation of reason above all. And the consequences of that are profound in Western culture. One of those consequences is the fact that Suddenly, if we embrace reason and we embrace every one of our reason, that all of us have the capacity to reason, we suddenly recognize that every one of us has the capacity to discover the truth. Every one of us has the capacity to make choices for ourselves. Every one of us has the capacity to live for ourselves. And suddenly you have a complete social breakdown. I mean, I don't think you know how people lived 300 years ago, right? Did you choose who to marry? No. Did you choose what profession to be in? No, and if you're a woman, certainly not, right? There were no professions available to you. Did you choose your political leaders? No. You had no choices back then. It's the discovery, rediscovery of reason that suddenly gives us the ability to make those choices. So, and, and, the, and, and the culmination of that trend was the establishment of the United States, which even has a moral component in that the Declaration of Independence says you have a right to your own life, to live it as you see fit, based on your own judgment. In pursuit of what? Happiness. That's pretty selfish. Pretty self-interested. So the Enlightenment created an environment in which we were free, in which reason was our guide, in which people pursued their happiness, and that's capitalism. You get immediately capitalism post-enlightenment. Now, at the same time, you get reactionary forces, forces that don't want the enlightenment, that don't want reason, that don't want um, uh, capitalism, that don't want individual liberty, individualism, call it, 
fighting back. And they primarily in Germany, right? They're primarily Kago, Kant, Schopenhauer, Marx, the whole string of them, who are basically fighting the Enlightenment. And we're still fighting it, right? Today, we live in a world in which most of us on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe, still value Enlightenment values. We pursue our happiness a little bit. We love technology. We love science. We love things like this. But at the same time, we are... We are under the influence of a philosophy and religion that is anti all those things. And that is the struggle we observe right now in the West. The struggle we're seeing right now in the West is between enlightenment and anti-enlightenment. And communism is anti-enlightenment. Fascism is anti-enlightenment. Religion is anti-enlightenment. All these are anti-Western values. They're, they're, they're fighting against, against, the ideas of the enlightenment and progress and freedom and capitalism. And the reason all of those things are declining and freedom is declining in the world today is because they're winning and the voices of the enlightenment are not.